All right, so the fuel line hasn't shown up yet. I guess they're waiting on some fittings from Detworks and hopefully they'll be here by end of day. So while I've got the car up, a couple of things. Number one, you can get rid of the old copper calipers and whatnot, but if you actually look on the insides of these wheels, they are coated and coated with what I believe to be is a leak from the axle seals. So I have a feeling that whoever put this diff cover on might have filled it up to the top of the fill port up there instead of filling it up to the factory position of here. And let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Did you look at that? So we'll let this do its thing until it's done. And hopefully fluid's not gonna wanna puke out through the axle seals anymore. Look at this. So yeah, it's a warm one. Actually, it's been a warm couple ones here in Texas this week. And whatever, still plugging away. I got the fan blowing. Reminds me of working in Dubai. So we got Justin's car up on the lift. The gas tank is resting down because I never fully bolted it back up. And we got wires dangling from the underside and fuel lines dangling and all types of just stuff dangling. So the, I guess, focus for today is uh, wrapping up some of the wiring and routing of wiring. Here is the main power wire that was run before. So I want to find a good home for that. I don't like the way that things were run originally. And you can see I've been uh, kind of testing, moving some stuff around here, but this is the original braided AN lines. And right, the AN lines or CPE is actually wider in nature just because the rubber is so thick beneath the braid and the braided steel, well, it's, I don't want to say sharp, but it's abrasive. So we don't want to scrape up our beautifully painted black floor here. And we just want to make sure that we have good options. So all of this braided line is going to be coming out and we're going to be replacing it all with PTFE line, which I've spoken about this a lot before in the past. So we've got everything that we need here. We got dash eight for our main. We got dash six for our return. And we got some dash 10 here that I'm going to get done up for the um, oil separator. And then we've got an array of fittings. So everything six, eight, tens. And this is all from Deechworks, guys. Um, I've gone through different suppliers and vendors of fuel products. I've tried your Evil Energies. I've tried your Hot, hot Rod Fuel Hose. And while the Deech works, I don't know, maybe it's the branding that's getting me, but I do know that they make a really good quality product. So we're gonna get to, like I said, disconnecting right, right here. So this is a Cobra, Cobra fuel tank in this car. So this is a better angle. So we'll be disconnecting our lines off here. That's our aeromotive hat. I believe it's an A1000. And that's gonna get replaced with, um, well, the pump isn't. The hat and the pump and everything there is staying, but the lines are getting replaced with Deechworks PTFE. And then we'll be putting a Deechworks uh, high flow fuel filter in. And then we have a fuel pressure regulator that's up in the engine bay there, and then dealing with some wiring and hopefully we'll be actually really close to being able to fire this thing up. Because we've done pretty much all the wiring for the Holly. So all the Terminator X, all the connections are done with the exception of more wires dangling. 
uh, to extend the harness here for the oil pressure sending unit. So I will be finishing this off and uh, we'll get the fuel pressure sending unit hooked up into the regulator assembly. I have to get super classy here. Which, not a huge deal. You don't need to get these fittings on like He-Man or anything, so. All right, just like that, there's our old fuel lines laying down on the floor. So now I know that I'm pretty much gonna be running a very similar setup. The question is, is do I want the lines to come straight out or am I gonna wanna kinda hook them over to give a little bit more room and steer them away from that differential? You can see I've actually put the over axle pipes of the exhaust in place as well, because with this Maxim Motorsport rear setup, everything was custom bent. And I just wanna be conscious of where those pipes and the bends and everything else are going, because the last thing I want is to run a fuel line or something too close to the exhaust or anything like that that's gonna see excessive heat or that could possibly get pinched by suspension or anything else. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do these two 45s and that way it's going to allow just a little bit more room coming out over here and that way it's going to steer the lines clear of the pumpkin right there because I don't want them going over that pumpkin. I want them kind of going off to the right of it and a straight shot to this area right here. And if I can get the lines in this area and whether I'm here and I'm gonna have to see the position of the mufflers again. And just to, that's why I've kind of got some of the exhaust mocked up in the front there because I do want the exhaust in here again so that I can make sure like I said, that everything's out of the way. You gotta remember, we're gonna have a big aluminum drive shaft here as well. So before they had run the lines down the transmission tunnel, and now that we're gonna have a much larger drive shaft, I don't think that that's going to be an option. So let's get these fittings on the lines and we'll start plumbing. So we're working with dash six, dash eight, dash 10. And then on the power steering pump, I'm actually using CPE, which is your traditional um, braided AN line. Uh, which the, which is a thicker diameter. And we've got our PTFE run. So I've managed to, um, you know, mock everything up, I think in a way that it's going to be out of harm's way, way. I need to get the exhaust and everything else underneath the car just to make sure. But we are getting really, really close. As soon as I get the last of the few fittings that I've ordered to try and get this regulator, I'm trying to like mount it right off the return of the rail here. And then I'll do um, a custom bracket off the back of the throttle body here, sort of like I did on Chuck's car. And I managed to get pretty much everything mocked up and connected. Everything is loose. So I'm gonna have to take everything apart, blow the lines out, flush the lines out, just make sure that we don't have any debris from all the cutting and the assembly so that that way that stuff doesn't end up in the top of the injectors. But let's take a look under the car here. So I'm gonna have to secure everything down. You can see we got a nice angle coming up over here this way. And of course it's away from the center of the differential. I did put the exhaust back up in place just to make sure that fuel lines and everything were furthest away from the exhaust as possible and the mufflers. So you can see I actually opted to run the lines down this way and up over here, up over where the emergency brake, parking brake, there's different terminologies for it, depending where you are, because somebody loved to uh, correct me on that in a video. So of course, everything is tie wrapped up into place for now, but there's lots of clearance from the muffler and everything else based on where the hangers and everything else was. And this is actually gave more space than tucking them up against the frame rail here. 
So of course the lines come out down here and kind of follow the factory run path. Got our high flow Detwix filter here. And I kind of like this slow or the slim profile version. And of course, once all the lines are held and fastened up, you know, everything will be, you know, tucked out of the way and pretty seamless. Of course, they come up here and a lot of people, you know, opt to go through that hole. We're gonna have to see what happens when the AC kit comes. But with that said, I've actually not only done the fuel lines, but I've done most of the wiring for the electric fans. So you can see that's all loomed and tied up there out of the way. We got our relays in position up here. Use the horn brackets to hold the relays in place. So we have fan one, fan two, these are all labeled. And then this is for the starter, right? So there's our starter signal wire through the relay and then goes to the starter. So this wire is run. I managed to fandangle my hands very creatively up in there so that I could get the appropriate uh, connections made. So that is done. Um, so right now I'm actually hooking up the last of the power steering. So you can see we've got, um, this is a CPE hose for the return because it's uh, pretty low pressure at the end of the day. And then I am running a PTFE line, which is this guy, and that's our high pressure line. So I just gotta run th this from the pump into this fitting right here. So I'm gonna get that done. And that's gonna conclude pretty much all the uh, lines on the underside of the car. And then I just have to do the catch can setup that I'm waiting on a few last fittings for on the top side. I actually pulled that big power cable that was underneath the car and I brought it inside the car. So um, I pulled it through and now one thing that I did notice, which is not very safe at all, there was no fuse on this end. Guys, I cannot stress how important it is to get some sort of a breaker or big fuse that is close to the battery because if for whatever reason you get a short in that wire anywhere between the battery and to wherever that cable is going, you're gonna be in for a bad time and potentially catch a car on fire and burn it down. So I'll definitely be getting something to put on that end and I'll get it as close to the battery as possible. And I think that's pretty much it in there. I did retap the correct wire. And of course, this is all just tentative wire for the fuel pump relay for the A1000 in tank, Cobra tank, and Aeromotive hat. Inside, Holly Dash is in place. We know that that power's on. Our mess of wires over there, the MSD hiding underneath the paperwork, but everything is, right, uh, working. But everything is working. And our connection point for switch 12 volts over there. And we'll get some things prettied up and fancied up. And again, the Terminator X is most likely going to go up into the factory computer location. I've got some extra wires hanging out there for AC inputs, outputs. Um, what's the other one? The fan fans. Those are the gray ones. So those ones I'm actually going to run over this way and get them out. <clears throat> And I wanna get them out over here with some of the other wiring that I've started and things again. When it comes to wiring guys, things always look really messy until you do the last tidy up of everything. So what we've got here is our 12 volt distribution point. So we got a main 12 volt distribution point here. Here's that main battery cable coming all the way from the back. So that will be hooking up here. We've got our four gauge wire that's going to the starter with the trigger wire. So we've got one relay that is gonna be for the ignition to turn the motor over. And I've done videos on that in the past. And then we've got two other relays and you can see I've got them labeled fan one, fan two. So it's starting to work on that and we'll get those wired up here. So now you understand why I want those two trigger wires from the Terminator out over here somewhere so that, that way I can trigger those relays. So traditionally on a Fox body, most of the wiring lives on the driver's side 
and I'm kind of just keeping it that way because I don't want to have to get in the headaches of running stuff either all the way across if I don't have to. We're really lucky here because our alternator is on this side, so that even shortens down more wiring. I've extended the, whatchamacallit, the oil pressure sensor wire so that that reaches all the way over there. And the only, the last sensor that I have to hook up is going to be this guy here for the fuel pressure and to make sure that the Terminator X gets the right signal there. All right, Brembo Cadillac ATS caliper upgrade time. So this car was already a five bolt conversion with Cobra rotors on it. So this is pretty much a plug and play install. And these were powder coated and stickered up by the one and only Tom Clark, AKA Cinespilt. And he actually even pressed in the SNS fittings and did the clearancing beforehand. So I literally, get to bolt this guy on, which is pretty sweet. You can see there's some brake line running here. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But let me go ahead, get this caliper mounted into place. On, which is... Okay, so I'll get a tool that kind of straightens the line out and makes things look a little prettier. But you can see here, I'm gonna get it right down with these other lines along the front of the rack. And we'll get a little clearance there along those lines. And you can see where it's going up to the T-fitting off the master there. So we just need to get one more line down off of that guy and then that one, I can either run it down along with this guy and then it'll come up and continue to come over and then I'll tie it into this one. Or, I could, this is what I liked about Chuck's car. They actually ran it down along this side and which makes sense. I don't know why the factory didn't do that considering this T is on this side already. And that could be an option. Actually, if I really wanted to, I could just run a new line down along this side, but well, I've already got all this line here, so it's sort of like, why not just use it? So I'll figure it out. So now the next thing, next uh, journey hurdle test that I need to do, and guys, that's why nothing ever like is done or like finalized until everything is finished. Like I'm not gonna make all the brake lines perfect. I'm not going to tighten everything down until I know everything is gonna work and it's in a position to work. And one of those things is actually the K-member. So you can see this guy is loose. This one is snug. And I think the back ones are snug. So the K-member is in, but it's not 100% in. The reason for that is we were concerned about hood clearance with that intake and everything else. And guys, it just hits. Like we need a quarter of an inch of clearance, if even that, like considering motor rotating while it's torquing and you know making its power, maybe a little bit more. So what I am going to install now are these spacer plates. So are gonna go here and here on both sides, and that's gonna drop everything down half an inch. And that should give us more than enough room up there for the hood, which is good. Now, the one thing that we need to keep in mind is actually gonna move all of the suspension geometry, the motor, everything, all the components, the exhaust is all gonna come down half an inch. So I'm gonna have to make sure and check all of the clearances and everything else that we're gonna be on a good angle. Now, the one thing that I think it might help with is, and this might be hard to see on the camera, the drive line's actually on a pretty good angle coming downward. And I was actually concerned about the tail shaft of the transmission here. And if the drive shaft wouldn't end up hitting this section here of the torque arm, it's like, if you look here straight on, I kind of have a feeling that I was thinking that the transmission was going to have to get shimmed up. 
Now, if we bring the front down, it's going to raise this guy up like this, which might actually correct this problem. And one other thing that I noticed earlier is, see these lower control arms? See how there's two sets of holes here? They actually, whoever installed this, put the arms in the upper hole, which is about a half inch, maybe an inch, um, different in terms of being up. So I think if we move the K-member down, these are kind of already in the right spot. And Justin complained about this having some pretty nasty bump steer on the road and stability. And I also don't like the angle of the tie rods here with the control arm. So um, I think we need to fix some of this. I think dropping the K-member down is gonna fix some of that. And all right, this is gonna be the lowest part of the car, that's for sure, because that's gonna come down even a little bit more. So we're gonna have to be conscious about that. But we're, what we're going to do is work on one section at a time. So I'm gonna put a jack post underneath here somewhere and um, secure this. We'll drop this part of the K-member down, slide in the shim or spacer there, then I'll do it back here and we'll go to the other side and do the same thing over there. And then we're gonna test all of our clearances. Now, one spot of concern is right here on this bracket for the blower. If it is going to touch the frame rail and we have this oil return line, which I just, that I need a uh, piece of pipe for to get that finalized. But worst case scenario, we can section this bracket right here and I'm pretty confident there's a good amount of room between the blower housing and the uh, frame rail right there. So that should clear, but this might be very, very close. So let's get at it. You can see I made a, a whoopsie here when I was installing the motor. I have to get some touch up paint. down and watching 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 and everything's looking pretty good and the hood is resting on the bumpers here in the front they could go down but i'm just trying to i think based on my knowledge of a fox body i feel like the hood's in a pretty good spot there and i think we've given ourselves just enough clearance right there and that's kind of that top corner of the intake not so much the the screws on the throttle position sensor were slightly touching before but um they are not it's just that corner on the intake that uh, is really close but i think we might be okay with that said we just need to make sure now that we're gonna have room for the discharge pipe coming from the blower going to that throttle body because there is a little bit less room right where this tapers down i think the fabricator is going to be able to uh, get around that so we're plowing away at things here the brakes were in good shape again just waiting on my fitting so we can hold the brake lines up we'll get new hardware for the k member now that we know that the shims are going to work there i might pop the rear wheels off swap out the rear calipers for the taurus ones and that'll be a straight swap the pads will swap over it's literally just the caliper itself that we need to swap over so that should be that should be good to roll it's the caliper So we are getting down to the final motions before we can actually hit the key and see if we can get this thing to fire up. Now, one important thing is that we will fire it without the blower connected initially. And that is because number one, we don't have a discharge pipe made yet. Number two, this guy being a YSI is gonna be real noisy. In fact, 
you can even hear it right there. So by leaving the belt off, especially at idle, the motor is not going to be looking for boost. Everything should be fine. As long as the tune file and everything else works, we should be okay. So I need to find a coupler and we'll just try and, you know, run a filter. We'll get something sorted out there. Um, just put oil in. I popped the drain plugs out, even though the motor was drained for shipping, I still probably got half a quart or so. So all of the original oil that was run on the dyno for braking and tuning and all that stuff, that's out. We filled it up with Rotella T4 15, 15, or 1540 as per the instructions. You can see I kept all the tags on here. So one, like there's no oil in the motor. So this is a check mark. We've done that. Uh, there's no oil in the transmission, all right? So we need to make sure that we get uh, the old synchro mesh, which I've got some bottles of it over there to get that into the TKX. Uh, Vortec, we got that line connected down on the bottom, the oil drain line, our oil feed lines on there. So everything should be pumping through there, although it's not going to be turning. What else do we have? Thermostats a 180. It tells us what the valve lash is. Oil capacity, six to seven quarts. I put in six to start. And it says, um, of course, our firing order, engine timing, CECU, and then fuel octane will be our 93. Uh, we put in some coolant in the radiator. The last things that I'm waiting on really is, well, I need to get all the spark plug wires back on. I need to make sure that this coil is mounted up well and fastened. The tolerances are super tight, but I'm really happy with the location that I managed to find for that guy. So the bracket actually lined up with two of the water pump bolts and made that uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So that's cool. It's more out of the way. It's not over here anymore. And all that's good. And finally, I just need my orb fittings to show up for the catch can set up here so I can get the ventilation for the breathability of the motor done. I blew out all the fuel lines. That's why they're off here. And in fact, I'm going to leave the main fuel line off and we'll hit the pump and we'll pour some fuel through there. It should be pretty, pretty clean considering that's been all blown out. All right, the next day, I'm even shaved up for the occasion. And the time, I think, is here to try and fire this thing up for the first time. I went through my checklist and prestigious checklist that they give with the tech sheet and all the other information that they supply when you get a crate motor from them. And it's funny and I guess blunt and to the point how they word things. It's pretty much that they don't cover stupidity. Make sure there's oil in the motor. Make sure you check the timing. Make sure there's coolant, right? Just common sense and due diligence, which goes a long way. So with that said, there wasn't really much to showcase since before, right? I updated the firmware on the Pro Dash, which was easy. You know, you download the latest file from Holly's website and stick it on the USB stick and update that. And come to find out the tune's already actually loaded on the Holly ECU. So um, I double checked that in the config file to see that it was there, uh, flushed out the fuel and made sure that that was all good. So I've checked wiring. I plugged up the open O2 bungs, and again, we're going to leave the blower belt off for initial startup. I got this rig on here, tiny little filter, but again, I just want to see if this thing will fire um, and idle. The only thing that I don't have, or like two things really in terms of complete le completeness, is um, I need the main power wire and ground hooked up for the alternator which, you know, that's just for charging, and the catch can. So right now I've got fittings, actually, I have one fitting. So I'll stick another fitting open on this side. So the valve covers will just pretty much be venting to atmosphere. And that's completely fine for startup. 
And once my fittings come in, they were supposed to be in yesterday, but they didn't come in time. So that's fine. We don't need that for a little bit of startup fun. Um, double check the wiring, right, for the Holly, uh, the MSD, you know, fuel pumps kicking on and priming. So I'm going to prime it a couple times and we'll check the fuel pressure regulator and uh, we'll hit the key. So, oh, I already see my first leak power steering fluid. I knew I tightened everything up except that damn bottom one. Okay, well, we got one issue. My switched ignition wire here, that's not gonna work because it's not getting power with, um, during the crank sequence. And I need to check our uh, neutral safety um, circuit or bypass it rather. Uh, because, um, yeah, we're not, uh, we're not getting any cranky crank. Okay. Dash is on. And let's see if we turn it on again, I'm just curious if the fuel pressure if it hits it quick enough, it'll probably drop off before it loads. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to do a shortcut here so that way you can actually monitor things. So I'm just going to, ignition's on. So I'm just going to try and crank it over with this guy and see what happens. What better way to finish off your Friday afternoon before you're about to fly out to Florida to see your friend help him paint his fox body? Because I'm actually leaving for Florida tomorrow morning to uh, help Lewis paint his 93 Cobra. And um, man, to get this thing fired up and idling away. Oh man, Jeremiah got a free case of beer from one of his customers earlier. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to grab one of them damn bottles and I'm going to enjoy. <laughs>